greetings to all of you in the precious name of our lord and savior jesus christ it's a matter of great joy for me to be with you all once again and share from god's word the bible we are studying from the book of philippians we are in philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 and 9 we already learned about a gospel driven life how it looks like gospel driven fellowship gospel driven prayer gospel driven ministry gospel driven humility gospel driven sanctification gospel driven ministers gospel driven holiness gospel driven warnings and gospel gospel driven hope gospel driven affections in our life and now as we come to philippians chapter 4 verse 8 and 9 we are looking at a gospel driven mind how our mind should be affected and should be controlled by the gospel of christ and what are the advantages of that what is that we get out of allowing our mind to engage with the lofty things of the word of god not the temporal passing things of the world rather than the lofty invaluable eternal things of god when it fills our heart and mind what happens and what is the uh, what should be the content of our thought life and that is what we have been looking at through the past few studies we already learned in philippians chapter 4 that paul is encouraging everybody to have a stable spiritual life the spiritual stability of their life the spiritual steadfastness of our life can come only when we work on our affections the basic bend of our life we already learned in verse 1 and 2 that we need to aim at a unity and jesus christ can give us and train us to have a united life and we also learned that we need to rejoice in the lord always under that verse we learned that there is a commandment for us to rejoice and there is a constancy we need to rejoice always and the cause of our rejoicing is not some thing of this world but cause of our rejoicing should be the lord the person of the lord and the work of the lord uh, itself or himself and we learned it under three headings the command the consistency and the cause of our rejoicing Uh, the command rejoice in the lord Co- constancy we need to rejoice always the cause rejoice in the lord then we learned about the need for gentleness in our life the command to be gentle and the scope wa- which all area we need to uh, need to be gentle with all men we need to be gentle and the cause or the 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 uh, prompting for us to be gentle the lord is near the lord jesus christ is going to come back and we also learned from philippians chapter 4 the need of an anxiety free living the prohibition not to be anxious and the prescription is to take everything to god in prayer in everything make your request made known to god and the promise we learned that the peace of god which surpass all human understanding will guard our heart a guarding divine and supra rational peace a, a peace which beyond what a human uh, understanding can perceive will fill your heart and soul and now we learn that we need to have a gospel driven mind our mind should be actively thinking about the spiritual things the things with which there is weight and there there is eternal value and we learned that uh, the contents of that thought should be in the line of we need to think of whatever is right whatever is honorable and whatever is true we already covered that ground let us read philippians chapter 4 verse 8 and 9 once again philippians chapter 4 verse 8 and 9 finally brethren whatever is true whatever is honorable whatever is right whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is of good repute if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise dwell on these things the things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me practice these things and the god of peace will be with you 
we need to have our thoughts engaged in whatever is true we learned that that which pertain to reality is truth and god is the ultimate reality jesus christ claimed that he himself is the truth about the god of the bible we learned that he is a god of truth the about the word of god we learned that the, it is the word of truth and when bible talks about anything in this world he talks about the real truth ultimate truth jesus christ as he walked this earth he told truly truly i say unto you every statement what he made about the holiness of god the sinfulness of man the provision of salvation the provision of justification the provision of righteousness imputation of righteousness everything was truth it is not just a fallacy and then we told and learned that we need to dwell on what is honorable that is what is dignified what is uh, 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 attached to reverence and all what is attached to god is honorable and all what is attached to god is dignified and majestic and we need to dwell on those things dwell means we need to meditate and reflect and consider an active consideration intentional consideration of these things about god should occupy and preoccupy our minds we already learned that what is right we need to dwell on what is right and god is the ultimate righteous person and he always does what is right when he love he do it right when he judge he do it right when he discipline he do it right and every way he is righteous and all what he does is righteous so if you want to dwell on what is right you need to dwell on who is god and what he has done and what he is doing in and through our lives and we closed the last class by telling on one side of the scale you have this pure righteous god and his nature and another side you have your mind and this should be in balance this should be uh, uh, this should not be contrary to one another our thoughts and attention should be given to those things which are right and we need to live close to god and then we come to the fourth point what we need to dwell on dwell upon whatever is pure whatever is pure purity speaks of holiness purity speaks of integrity and god is the ultimate holy person and god is the one who is with absolute 100% integrity those things which are not tainted in any way by evil paul uses this word to describe a pure virgin pure virgin means it's untainted and it's translated chaste in second corinthians chapter 11 verse 2 we we learn about the pure virgin who is prepared for the lord jesus christ and then chaste person in first peter chapter 3 verse 2 first peter chapter 3 verse 2 we we read about his instruction regarding the woman they must be chaste means pure purity untainted holy and integ- uh, and there is integrity and <clears throat> uh, your chaste and respectful behavior so this speaks of moral purity and of uprightness and even innocence being free from guilt and blemish we should not allow our mind to engage in things which we later think about or contemplate and when we feel guilty our own conscience will bear witness against those thoughts which we engaged in our heart and we feel guilty and we feel yuck about ourselves we feel blemish uh, within and we should not allow such thoughts to be entertained in our life and surely this has strong implication on those things we choose as our entertainment the things we occupy ourselves during our recreation hours this has implication on our choice of our leisure time reading material and uh, to dwell on that which is pure have implication on our tv watching and uh, this uh, uh, truth or the encouragement to dwell on that which is pure has implication on our internet surfing 
in the wisdom of god he gives us principles that we are to meditate upon and internalize and then within those boundaries we are to apply those principles according to our scripture informed conscience we are to dwell upon whatever is pure so whatever is impure in internet whatever is impure in tv whatever is impure in your reading material you are not supposed to watch that and spend your time on that because it infiltrates into your mind and your mind will rehearse those things in your uh, 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 understanding and that is going to affect you and that is going to produce guilt in your life and it is going to condemn you your own conscience will condemn you but you should not leave as a hypocrite and a person who is harboring uh, impure thoughts and uh, lustful thoughts in your heart we need to dwell upon whatever is pure and so if you deliberately put yourself in the way of books and magazine and tv shows and movies and websites that are going to expose your mind to sexual impurity to foul language and to sinful pattern of your life you are in violation to this text i will tell you all those things will affect the way we think about ourselves the way we view and think about others the way we will will scheme and plan in our mind and the words which comes out of our mouth everything will be affected but god's word says that we should dwell on whatever is pure we have to fix our eyes and we have to fix our minds on what is pure when we are tempted to dwell upon those things which are impure we must as the song says turn your eyes upon jesus look full in his wonderful face and the things of the world will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and might jesus christ the person of christ can satisfy your soul it can he can satisfy your eyes he can satisfy your mind and your heart and as you turn your eyes upon jesus looking at him as revealed in the pages of the scripture the things of the world the passing pleasures of this world will grow strangely dim that is why in hebrews chapter 11 we read about moses he chose he chose not the passion and pleasures of this world but he chose to live for god's glory why he looked at the reward he looked at the lord who is enthroned in heaven and god who is a god of judgment god who is a god of wrath god who is a god of love and compassion a god who is a god of forgiveness and such a god is inviting you and me to engage our mind with things what is pure and holy and right and honorable and when we do that we will be blessed by him first john chapter 3 verse 2 first john chapter 3 verse 2 calls us beloved we are children of god and we know that when he that is jesus christ when he appears we will be like him because we will see him as he is and everyone in verse 3 of first uh, john chapter 3 we read like this who uh, everyone who has this hope fixed on him purifies himself just as he is pure jesus christ is pure and jesus christ whatever he does is pure and he can purify you he can purify your heart you can he can cleanse your mind and he can take your life to a, a different arena and he will be able to bless you all through eternity for that you need to give your mind to christ you need to give your heart to christ you need to give your plans to christ you need to give your schemes and your goals and your focus to christ and he will change your heart and mind and then we come to the next point the thing what we should dwell upon whatever is lovely the fifth one we have to dwell upon whatever is lovely this refers to those things which inspire love that which is pleasing that which is agreeable that which is lovely and one commentator says these things give pleasure to all and cause distaste to none like a welcome fragrance 
that's a uh, that's a lovely illustration a welcome fragrance something that makes you just want to stop and take a deep breath and take in that refreshing fragrance our life our mind should be allowed to think on those kind of lovely things we have to give our minds to winsome thoughts and delightful things elevated things lofty things lovely things not that which is raw and crude and ugly and distasteful when we come to the sixth virtue sixth point what we need to allow our mind to be focused on whatever of good report and then six we are to dwell upon whatever is of good report good repute good reputation whatever has a good reputation whatever is spoken well of by those whose minds are upright those things of good reputation before god and godly people that should dwell our minds and then finally paul reaches with the two final all encompassing terms till now all these six words which he has shared with us it's all very specific and we need to we need to put our thoughts and minds in the line of these things true things honorable things right things pure things lovely things they are whatever is of good report and then he comes and share with us two all encompassing things what we need to uh, engage our mind with what we need to dwell upon if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise dwell on these things paul is telling in philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 if there is anything excellence any excellence and anything worthy of praise dwell on these things if i have left anything paul is telling if i have left anything out in my list of virtue with which you have to occupy your mind if there is anything in the world that comes under the heading of moral excellence and if there is anything that is worthy of praise before god and godly men dear people think on those things think on these things be occupied and preoccupied with these things give your mind and your attention and your energy and your careful consideration and your pondering upon these things we are to examine ourselves before god we are to examine ourselves before god and ask him to search us and try us and to see if there is any harmful hurtful ways in us that is what uh, uh, david did in psalm 139 139 psalm verse 23 and 24 Paul, uh, uh, david prayed to god lord please search me search my mind search my heart and if there is any wicked way if there is any hurtful way if there is something which I, which is dwelling in my heart and mind which is not pleasing to you not honoring you what is not right what is not lovely what is evil and lustful please show it to me i want to get rid of that i want you to forgive me of that and that prayer should be our prayer we are not to be morbidly introspective regarding our own selfishness some of you are so constantly focused on your failures that you are anxious and depressed and and you are dejected paul calls you to look outside of yourself and away from yourself to the loveliness and virtue of christ and to trust in him who accomplished righteousness in your place he took upon himself your sin your sins were imputed upon his body he bore our sins on the cross it pleased the lord to crush him god the father crushed his son as if he sinned and his righteousness is imputed in our life if we are willing to go to him and ask for righteousness ask for forgiveness if you confess your sins he is faithful and just to forgive you all your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness and he is able to cleanse your mind and fill your mind where you will be dwelling on the things of god neither are we to be inordinately preoccupied with the evils of the world god has called us to be discerning but some of you have 
uh, preoccupation with the evil of this world all that occupies your mind is the corruption of the government corruption and injustice of the society the conspiracy theories the potential for wars and whether the political climate is ripe for the arrival of antichrist you are thinking so many things in your mind others of you have fostered a critical spirit when it comes to the weakness of the visible church you you criticize the church you criticize the leaders you criticize the professing christians you criticize the people who are not progressing in grace and so on and so forth but paul says if there is anything excellent if there is anything worthy of praise dwell on these things beloved we need to give our mind not to the negative things what we see in this world negative things what we see in believers negative things what we see in this world like the earthquake and tsunami and uh, 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 political unrest and uh, 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 different climatic changes in this world we need to dwell on the eternal reality of god and his son so paul in this verse Uh, Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 he is summoning us he is encouraging us he is edifying us he is commanding us he is prompting us to have the right godly thinking and that godly thinking that gospel driven mind is going to equip you for eternity you will plan and prepare for eternal things you will plan your mind will plan and scheme for pleasing god he your mind will be engaged in the program of god and what he is doing in this world jesus christ told i am not of this world Jesus Christ told my kingdom is not of this world Jesus Christ talks about his kingdom he talks about heaven as his home he talks about heaven as the place from where he came he talked about heaven see the play uh, as the place where he is going he told his father is there he is preparing a place for us and we need to prepare ourselves for the glory of Christ we need to prepare to meet him in air we need to prepare for our life of eternity and that is our home that is our place where we need to get ready to go and in this world it is time for us to glorify god to honor god and to give our mind to those things what pleases god and what god has encouraged us to think on and as we dwell on these things as we are going to continue our study we will learn that it will affect our practice it should affect our practice it should come into action the active thoughts and active mind which think about the eternal things will result in certain affections and attitude and actions in our life and if we are not able to see that i will tell you you may not be a truly born again person if you are coming from bad to worse if your mind is becoming more and more corrupt as you age if your if your lust and passions of this world is increasing day by day you have not given your life to christ i urge you to consider the person of christ the uniqueness of christ christ the lord of heaven and earth christ the king of king he came into this world he took the form of a man and that we learn as the incarnation of christ and through the incarnation of christ he brought salvation to us he is our salvation captain and he became our substitute as a sin bearer and he is a sympathetic high priest to us he is a satan conqueror for us and if you trust in him you will have salvation from sin you will have victory over satan and this world you will have a sympathetic high priest who will be interceding on behalf of you in heaven and he is going to come back he has promised to come back again and take all those people who eagerly wait for his coming are you a person who is waiting for christ the greatest event which the world is going to face world is going to see in the near future is the second coming of the lord jesus christ 
Jesus Christ, when he visited this earth almost 2000 years back, it was prophesied in the Holy Bible. And about the second coming of Christ, there are many, many verses and it is going to take place. Are you ready for his coming? Prepare your hearts, prepare your mind, prepare your whole life for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is a fact and it's a truth that he is going to come back again. Let us pray to the Lord that we will have a gospel driven mind for God's glory. Gracious loving Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this uh, time of uh, studying from your word. We thank you for revealing to us what you intend us to have in our mind what we need to dwell upon and as we draw our hearts and minds captive to the obedience of christ and dwell on whatever is right and holy and honorable and lovely we are going to be benefited lord and as we continue our study enable us to learn the benefits and the value uh, of uh, uh, doing these things and obeying your word we will be blessed and your name will be glorified in and through our life to that and we commit ourselves at thy feet in jesus christ most precious name we pray amen